Hey class, it's Mr. Falstrom, and today we are going to talk about equivalent fractions. And our learning goal is we are going to explore the meaning of equivalent fractions, and we are also going to get a little bit of practice and learn some strategies to help us rename fractions to their equivalent counterparts. So first of all, we're just going to start off with the word equivalent. What does equivalent mean? Go ahead and take a guess, or maybe perhaps you already know it. And equivalent essentially means equal. So if it means equal, then that means that equivalent fractions are fractions that are equal, they have the same value, they represent the same amount. For example, if an equivalent fraction is a fraction with the same value, let's go ahead and let's let's show that visually. So here is our whole, here's our one whole. And what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut our whole into two equal parts. And then we are going to color one of those parts. And so the name of that green part is one half. That's the name of that piece because now we split our whole into two equal pieces and we have one of those pieces shaded. Now we're going to bring in an identical whole. And this time, instead of having it cut into two equal parts, we're actually going to cut it one more time and cut it into four equal parts. And so now, um, there are four equal pieces that make the whole, but if you look, the two pieces that are shaded, the two fours, that is the same amount as the one half. If you look at the both green piece, if you look at the one half piece and the two fours pieces and you look, compare them, they are the same. They um, represent the same amount. So those are equivalent fractions. One half is equivalent to two fours. And Let's say we want to uh, cut the cut it up even smaller. So let's take that second model and instead of cutting it into four equal parts, let's cut it into six. So now we have six equal pieces that make up the whole. And now if we look at the green part, three of them are shaded, which means that the fractions one half and three six are equivalent. They both uh, represent the same amount. Something else I'd like you to notice is that when you look at the denominators, the bigger the denominator, the smaller your pieces get, right? So when we only have two pieces in a whole, those pieces are pretty large. When we have something cut into six, the size of a, of a one sixth piece, it's much smaller than a one half piece. And I think sometimes people can get confused about that. They think that the, the usually we think that the bigger a number is, that would mean that the fraction is bigger, but actually in fractions, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the pieces are getting. So we've already, we, we, I just showed you with that model that one half is equal to two fourths, which is also the same as three sixths. And I want you just to kind of look at these three fractions right here. And I want you to look at the numerators, the numbers on the top, do you notice a pattern with the numbers on the top? And then look at the denominators, the numbers on the bottom. Do you notice a pattern happening with those? I want to see if you can predict what the next equivalent fraction in this sequence is. We started out 1 half, 2 4 3 6. Can you guess what's next? And 3 6 is also equivalent to 4 eighths. 1 half is equivalent to 4 eighths. All of these are all equivalent to one another. They all have the same value. Um, so now look at the tops again. We went 1, 2, 3, 4. Can you guess what the numerator for the next fraction will be? And now look at the bottom. We went 2, 4, 6, 8. Can you guess what the denominator for the next fraction will be? And the next fraction in the sequence would be 5 tenths. 
So as you can see, um, I've got those models above, so you can see that these are truly all equal. And as you look at the denominators, notice as the denominators get bigger, um, the size of the pieces are shrinking. Bigger denominator, smaller size pieces. It takes more pieces, takes more tense pieces to, to get to um, a half than it would with larger size pieces. All right, so now we're going to talk about how to rename fractions. So one method is going to be skip counting. And we're going to do this one first because I think this one is pretty simple and I like it. So let's do some skip counting practice. Okay, so let's skip count by ones. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, we could keep going, but we won't. Okay, now let's practice skip counting by twos. Here we go. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and we would just keep going. Now let's skip count by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, and so on. So this will be our last one by fours. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. So if you can skip count, then you can do the skip counting method. That's all it takes. If you know how to just skip count by numbers, then this is a really nice strategy. Here's how it works. Oh, you can do it. I forgot to say that. You can do this method. All right, so here's how it works. I got ahead of myself. Um, we're, I just picked this fraction, two-fifths. This works with any fraction. So it doesn't have to be just with two fists. It's it's literally any fraction that you see, you can use this. So here's how it works. First part is we're just gonna skip count the numerator. So the numerator is two, so we're gonna skip count by twos. So we got two, four, six, eight, and we could keep going, but I don't have room. So that's step one. Step two, we're just gonna skip count the denominator. So that's five, so we're gonna skip count by five. So five, 10, 15, 20. And now we can see that two fifths is equivalent to four tenths. Two fifths is equivalent to six fifteenths. Eight twentieths is equivalent to two fifths. And they're all equivalent to each other. Four tenths is equivalent to eight twentieths. Six fifteenths is equivalent to four tenths. They're all representing the same amount. So. Boom, we just renamed these original fraction, the original fraction two fifths, we renamed it to all these other equivalent fractions just by skip counting. Another method is multiplying. And it's also pretty simple. Here's how it works. We'll just do it with two fifths again. All, you're, all, all we're gonna do is this. We're just gonna multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. So you just decide so for this example, I just decided to multiply both of those by three. So we're going to multiply the, the numerator by three. We're going to multiply the denominator by three. And we would end up with the equivalent fraction of 6 fifteenths. So that's also a really easy way. Quiz time. I want you to tell me a fraction that is equivalent to two thirds and you can use any strategy. You can skip count. You could just pick or you could pick any number you want and multiply the numerator and denominator by that number. It's up to you. So go ahead and tell me one. And some possible answers. I mean, there's, there's so many, different answers. I'm going to have to look and see what you actually said, but 
Um, some possible answers, if you did skip counting, you might have just went uh, two skip counts to four, three skip counts to six. You could have kept going. You could have said six ninths. You could have said eight twelfths. Or maybe you chose to multiply. So let's just, uh, I'm just going to pick, what if I multiplied it? multiply both those by nine, um, an equivalent fraction for two thirds could also be 18 27ths. Um, there's so many different answers that you could have done. So hopefully, um, hopefully you, you, you did it correctly. Let's come back to our learning goal. This is a pretty short video. Um, our goal is to explore equivalent fractions, just the meaning of what they are. What does it mean if a fraction is equivalent to another fraction? And then we also did a little bit of practice by renaming fractions to other equivalent fractions using skip counting and multiplying. So let's recap some of that information, the key information. Our recap, first thing in the video was uh, equivalent fractions are fractions that represent the same amount. They are equal. So even though um, one half and five tenths, um, even though something divided into tenths has way more pieces, five of those pieces, five out of the ten pieces, is equivalent to a one half, and we're assuming that the holes are the same size. And then we also learned that we can take any fraction and we can rename it to an equivalent fraction by either skip counting the numerator and the denominator, or we can multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. And this is something that we're going to do a ton of practice with uh, on our whiteboards in class later. So. Um, if you don't feel super comfortable with it yet, trust me, you will be. We're going to do it a lot. So way to go. Thanks for watching the video and participating. And I will see you soon on the next video.